Hello there. Welcome to the General Conference Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research presentation on records management. There's a lot of aspects of records management that we can discuss, but I'm going to be relatively succinct. So let's start at the beginning. Why should Adventists keep good and accurate records? Well, beyond the fact that it makes us better at whatever we do in support of the cause of Christ, which alone is a pretty good reason, it also allows us to learn from both the good and the bad in our denomination's history. Our history is a source of information, inspiration, and education. Additionally, Adventist history is key to Adventist identity. It's the story of our community, and it should be preserved well in order to allow us to learn about ourselves in that Adventist context. Another good reason is its General Conference Working Policy. BA 7005 on Records Management requires it. It states, the normal operation of denominational organizations and institutions results in the production and the accumulation of a large volume of files and records of varying degrees of administrative and historical value. In order to preserve documents of permanent value and to avoid the unnecessary preservation of unneeded materials, each organization will find it advantageous to establish a records management program. We will be touching on a number of records management terms. I will mention several briefly so that you have a better understanding. Record Center. Record Center is a central repository in which an organization can store and manage all of its records. The Record Center supports the entire records management process, from records collection through records management to records disposition. Archives. An archives is an area utilized for storage of inactive records, manuscripts, papers, and memorabilia, which are retained permanently for historical, legal, research, or social reasons. Also, an archives is the agency responsible for selecting, preserving, and making available non-current records with long-term value. Now, the term is disposition, which is the final state in a record's life cycle, involving either destruction, transfer to inactive storage with destruction at a specified later date, or transferred to your organization's archives for permanent preservation. Document. A document, very simply, is recorded information regardless of the form or medium of it. Filing system. A filing system is a planned arrangement of records designed to satisfy the reference needs of the people who use them. The classification scheme which structures records so that they are readily accessible and complete. Life cycle. Life cycle is the concept that the paperwork of an institution goes through in distinct phases. Records are created, records are used for some purpose, and records are stored or filed for future reference, evaluation, and eventually disposed of or transferred to an archives for permanent retention. Records inventory. It's an identification and evaluation of the records possessed by an office for the purpose of creating a retention schedule. Retention schedule, a records retention schedule defines how long records must be kept and provides disposal guidelines for how records are to be discarded, determined by the record type in the business, legal and compliance requirements associated with your data. Then we have principles of records management. There are a number of principles. These are all espoused by ARMA, which is the largest record management organization in the world. First principle I'd like to mention is the principle of compliance. A record keeping program must be constructed to comply with applicable laws and other binding authorities, as well as your organization's policies. The principle of availability. An organization must maintain records in a manner that ensures timely, efficient, and accurate retrieval of needed information. Principle of retention. An organization must maintain its records and information for an appropriate time, taking into account legal, regulatory, fiscal, operational, and historical requirements. Then we have the principle of accountability. 
and that requires that an organization assign a senior executive to oversee record keeping program and delegate program responsibility to appropriate individuals, adopt policies and procedures to guide personnel and to ensure program auditability. And there's also the principle of integrity. A record keeping program must be constructed so that the records and information generated or managed by that organization have a reasonable and suitable guarantee of authenticity and reliability. Also, the principle of protection. Record keeping program must be constructed to ensure a reasonable level of protection to records and information that are private, confidential, privileged, secret, or essential to business continuity. And principle of disposition. An organization must provide secure and appropriate disposition for records that are no longer required to be maintained by applicable laws and the organization's policies. And the principle of transparency. The processes and activities of an organization's record keeping must be documented in an understandable manner and be made available to all personnel and appropriate interested parties. Next topic is goals for record management. Policies and procedures. To produce a written document that outlines your organization's records management and archival policies. And produce a second or attached document that outlines the procedures that you will use to fulfill your policy. Records inventory, very essential. You conduct a general records inventory to find out both what records your offices are producing and keeping and what record types exist and the approximate volume of records that are stored within each office. Designate a filing system. First decide what type of filing system you need. What works best? Paper and filing cabinets? Film? Electronic? Or some combination of those? And follow it to the degree that is most practical and feasible. And a record storage facility. Choose a facility for the storage of records that are useful but are no longer needed in the office. It may be on site, it may be off site, but be sure that that facility is secure and protects your records. And a records retention schedule, a core ingredient in records management. Prepare a document that states your record retention policy and the procedures needed to follow it. Keep that document within your retention schedule. Vital records. Vital records are records without which you could not effectively operate. This includes articles of incorporation, deeds, constitutions and bylaws, minutes of boards or governing committees, property records and legal documents, and issues of an intellectual nature such as trademarks and copyrights. There are record keeping challenges, of course. Uh, managing different media types is certainly one of them. Records may be paper or digital and kept on hard drives, in the clouds, or even in remote locations. Another is record retrieval. One of the most difficult things to do in records management is to be able to retrieve records every time you need them. And storage space. Whether your office is just paper records, digital records, or a combination of both, securing storage space for them can be difficult at times and re record retention. That's the period of time that you keep a record, and it can be a short period of time, a long period of time, or forever, depending on the record type. And of course, there's maintaining the security and integrity of your records. It requires constant vigilance and measures needed to be taken in order to ensure record security. Social media, in this digital age, an office's records may very well extend to and include is social media posts. Using your own device. Again, in this, this digital age, we have smartphones, we have tablets, and there are times that records are kept on them. We do not recommend that for a variety of reasons, security being a primary one. Archiving websites. It's a necessity and an ongoing task as URLs come and go. Archiving electronic data. ASTR treats electronic data in the same manner as paper data, security, access, and retention periods. Record retrieval issues. 
Create an index of records in the Archives and Record Center. Organize your records index by department and record type. That helps greatly when doing searches and retrievals. After processing records into the Record Center, Archives sends a report to the department or office that sent the records, acknowledging those records have been taken care of. Store the boxes in the Record Center or Archives by box number rather than by department. Boxes will be easier to find and will result in a more efficient use of space. Additionally, we found that it's a security measure because anyone looking at those boxes cannot tell what department they belong to. Storage issues. Record availability. The more frequently a record is used, the closer it needs to be in the office using it. Records that require immediate retrieval should be stored electronically. Then we have the issue of on-site or off-site. Well, the amount of space available on-site might not be adequate for your record retention needs. Evaluative factors to keep in mind include space needed now and needed for the future, and also storage fees that are charged in off-site situations, and the approximate frequency of record retrieval. And of course, we have different media types. Different types of records media have different storage requirements that need to be considered. Paper records require a lot more space than digitized records. And we have hazards. Records are threatened by a variety of hazards, some more likely than others. Some of the most common hazards are fire, water, humidity, mold, theft, vandalism, vermin, and the mishandling or misfiling of records. In order to use your resources to their fullest, evaluate the threats to your records and protect against the most likely threats. Storage options. Here we have several also. We have self-storage, keeping it on site. The pros are that you retain control of your records, and it's easier and more immediate when you want to access those records. The cons are that you need to find and maintain adequate space secure that space, and you have personnel and administrative costs associated with it. Commercial. Commercial record storage, you have pros and cons with that also. Pros, lower administrative costs and lower cost per box for storage, depending on the volume. The cons are that you have a higher cost of retrieval. Access to records are less convenient. There's no physical control of those records because they're under someone else's custody. And the cost to retrieve records if you discontinue service. And then we have cloud storage. Pros are there is no cost for the server. Records are readily available for a wide area. The cons are security. You don't control those records and you have to concern yourself with the reliability of the service provider. Creating a record retention schedule. Inventory is an issue. Inventory all current records, including all media types, maintained in the office to which the record retention schedule is to apply. Creation. Create a master list of record types and draft a preliminary retention schedule. Determine. Determine your retention periods on the basis of legal, administrative, and historical value. Collate. Collate all inventory forms and put information into a draft record retention schedule. And a draft. Draft retention schedule, once it's devised, is to be reviewed, edited, and circulated to management and appropriate departments, including legal. Approvals. Now, with department and legal approvals, your retention schedule becomes official until there is a future revision. Review. Be sure to review the retention schedule at regular intervals, and in effect, annually or biannually. And I'll give some tips. Start small, one department or one record group at a time. And remember that both paper records and digital records have the exact same record retention period. There is no difference in this respect, despite the record medium. One way to ensure failure is to try to do everything all at once. Make the retention schedule as generic as possible. Make the retention schedule, as well as your records management system, as transparent and easy to follow as possible. 
The measure of its success is the degree to which it is understood and followed. This section I call the what to's. <laughs> what to keep. Correspondence dealing with policies, administration, personnel, projects, statistics, final travel itinerary, set of original form letters, minutes produced by your department or for which someone in your department is the chair, case files, topical files, material published by your department such as AV material, videos, photos, podcasts, a copy of brochures and reports. And of course, what to discard. Routine requests, catalogs, brochures, services, circular memos from other offices, correspondence concerning travel planning, non-SDA published or duplicated material, temporary financial records, phone bills, purchase orders, monthly financial statements. And what to archive. Think of your archives as being your organization's corporate memory. You would want to save records portraying beginnings, changes, endings, dealing with cases, events, problems, projects that reveal the purpose and function of your organization and that document your organization's relationship with other denominational organizations. And accreditation. Start with the background. You'll remember the GC working policy I cited at the beginning of this presentation, BA 7005 on records management. Well, ASTR was receiving requests from certain divisions as to whether or not they were keeping records, such as their vital records, in the manner that we would recommend. In responding to these requests, we sought a means of uniformly evaluating record keeping while taking unique considerations into account. Our response incorporated a record evaluation process, which provides records management benchmarks that we have termed ASDR's accreditation program. ASTR now has a track record of visiting division headquarters, providing counsel, training seminars, and records management consultancy to support division efforts in establishing and maintaining records management programs. We have now accredited division record keeping programs on five continents. You might ask, why accreditation? Well, the task of accreditation is based on the philosophy that each denominational entity operated in the name of the Seventh-day Adventist Church assumes the dual responsibility of fulfilling expectations of its constituency and of supporting the church's mission. Accreditation of an institution by ASTR signifies that the institution has a purpose appropriate to service the record-keeping needs of those in its constituency and has the resources, programs, and services sufficient to accomplish the institution's goals. Accreditation plays a significant role in fostering confidence in the record keeping of the church and of its various entities. Accreditation serves to maintain minimum standards, enhance institutional effectiveness, and provide inter-institutional recognition. Benefits of accreditation. Accreditation optimizes record content, record quality, and record accessibility. The foremost benefit is that your record holdings are now systematically maintained in a manner consistent not just with ASDR's holdings and recommendations, but in a manner that best facilitates your staff and external records researchers accessing those records. Your records are now kept in a systematic manner that best ensures that these records are accessible each and every time they are needed. Accreditation also improves record keeping processes while enhancing skills and knowledge of your staff. With your records maintained in accordance with ASDR's recommendations, all of your record staff members are now trained to perform the same activities each and every time. This unanimity in performance ensures that your department's record keeping is professionally organized and operated. Accreditation reflects achievement and facilitates the best way to ensure maintaining the unique history and heritage that those records comprise. Organizing and maintaining your holdings in a manner consistent with accreditation standards evidences that you have strived to reach a level of achievement commensurate with only the best record keeping centers within the World Church. It evidences that you were committed to and achieved a measure of excellence. 
Accreditation demonstrates your desire for excellence in the record-keeping profession. Your attainment of accreditation reflects the fact that you're committed to a record-keeping performance that is globally recognized by ASTR. It signifies that you want the very best in your record-keeping and practices and have done what is necessary to earn that hallmark. Accreditation ensures greater professional recognition from peer facilities while promoting peer efforts to also gain accreditation. Your path to accreditation encourages a cycle towards record-keeping excellence. And as church record-keeping facilities around the world become aware of the accreditation process, they will recognize the professional achievement involved in attaining accreditation. The more that other record-keeping facilities become aware of the process and peer recognition of that achievement, the more that record-keeping facilities will want to gain accreditation. Levels of accreditation. ASTR has defined accreditation specifications for four levels within both record centers and archives. Emerging. Emerging is our base level of accreditation for both record centers and archives. It encompasses criteria within staffing and oversight, physical locations and preservation and policies. Evaluation awards a maximum of 120 points in this category and a passing score of a minimum of 72 points, or 60%, is necessary. The next level is recognized. Recognizes our intermediate level of accreditation for both record centers and archives. It also encompasses criteria within staffing and oversight, physical locations and preservation, and policies. And while the areas of examination are basically the same, the degree of criteria is more difficult. Evaluation awards a maximum of 130 points in this category. A passing score of a minimum of 65 points or 50% is necessary. Next level is approved. This is our advanced level of accreditation for both record centers and archives. And approved, again, encompasses criteria within staffing and oversight, physical locations and preservation, and policies within the degree of criteria that's even more exacting. Evaluation awards a maximum of 175 points in this category. In addition to requiring a passing score of 105 points, or 60%, there are several absolute requirements that are not minimally gradable. And the center of excellence. This is our highest level of accreditation. And it requires an institution to have both a record center and an archives, both of which are stringently examined in the areas of staffing and oversight, physical locations and preservation, and policies. Evaluation awards a maximum of 316 points, in addition to requiring a passing score of 237 points, or 75%. Criteria is exacting with several absolute requirements that are not minimally gradable. I'd like to add some noteworthy comments. Accreditations encompass a wide range of evaluative criteria, including records management, staffing, policy, storage, safety and hazards, accessibility, fire prevention, and IT support. Now, the pandemic has curtailed our ability to fly anywhere, but we look forward to recommencing our evaluation efforts as soon as conditions permit. We have pending applications from both SSD and ECD, both of which we look forward to visiting. Accreditations are awarded for a minimum period of 24 months and a maximum period of 60 months. Reevaluation is to follow. Now, for those viewers that are interested in learning more about the Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research, including but not limited to the accreditation program, I strongly recommend visiting us on the internet at adventistarchives.org. I thank you for tuning into this presentation, and we look forward to you viewing all of our presentations and in visiting our website blessings. And remember, the value of information is directly related to its accessibility. Thank you.